lovely parents. Now, if you don't know me by now, I'm Sam, your host, wellbeing practitioner, and this is Surviving Parenthood, a parenting podcast. Thank you to those who tuned in during season one and for your positive comments and thumbs up, as I love to hear from you. In this series, we are talking about some great parenting tips whilst learning from our experts, from meditation to the menstrual cycle, from school drop-offs to stressful times. We look at how to educate our kids, how to be kind to ourselves as parents, and what it's like to raise a family. Whilst as always getting to know more about our lovely guests and their unique family setups. In other episodes, it will just be you and me. And today is just that. Hopefully, I won't ramble on too much. As if you're anything like me, time is of the essence. And let's cram in as much as we can in the shortest amount of time. So, positive thinking. Positive thinking. How are we feeling? feeling about that how do we feel this time of year it's the start of the new year so I think it's a bit of a parenting sin to confess this but I'm not actually a big fan of Christmas I usually have this mental image of two very wholesome children unwrapping delicately their presents 9am Christmas morning, followed by a beautiful, magical day of holiday cheer. The reality is I have threatened to that Santa won't be coming to our house um, that night on Christmas Eve. Um, about six times I've threatened that, and it's absolute chaos by 4.30am the morning of things don't go as planned. This is something I feel on a daily basis as a mother and this we will return to. So by the time January comes around, the kids have been off for two weeks, I'm tired, I need a bit of stress relief and a positivity reminder for the new year. For some, January might feel a bit blue for lots of different reasons. Perhaps the holiday cheer fades. Perhaps there are extra financial worries. The kids quite often get ill during this time of year, returning to work. So the lack of daylight, body image pressures can rear its head during this time. So it might be something else. But if you feel you need extra support during this time, with any mental health issues, please contact your healthcare professional. So how do we start the year in a positive way and as we mean to go on? What I might say is positive thinking isn't bypassing negative events. It isn't being unrealistic. It isn't avoiding or not experiencing an array of natural human emotions what it might be instead is talking to yourself talking to ourselves in a more productive and optimistic way how often do we mislead ourselves or even gaslight ourselves into thinking we're not deserving not deserving of good things how often do we extend our singular negative thought into the future so we catastrophize that one thing we then expect the worst I guess how often do we as parents especially pile on the self-blame negative past events negative day with our kids I mean I do love a bit of self-condemnation at the best of times so I feel that as well but why is it good why is it good to reframe and think positively well when we um, think happy thoughts our brains produce more serotonin now serotonin is our mood stabilizer we also produce less cortisol cortisol is like our alarm trigger so that lessens the result of this, we are happier, more centred, focused, 
creative and it is really possible to retrain how we think, to focus more on the positives. So that's the why. Now the how. So this is the good bit. How do we think in a way that allows a deeper sense of happiness and a deeper sense of self-belief? One really cool way is mindfulness. This is all about being in the here and now. Now, it's easier said than done, and I get that. Um, We are natural problem solvers as humans, so it might take some patience and some persistence. I've been doing this for a little while, and I need to remind myself every single day, and I still forget most days, just to put it into perspective. So what does mindfulness look like as, as parents especially? It might look like letting go of the wrestle of that moment, letting go of the wrestle of how things are playing out in front of us, going back to things aren't going the way I had planned, unpredictability is stressful, can be stressful. And when we get stressed, the kids tap into this, they get anxious, this increases our stress, and we find ourselves in a negative stress loop. So how can we be more positively present? I've put together five cool, amazing ways, I hope, um, to be mindful. Number one, really simple, look at the body and look at the breath. So simply, how are we holding ourselves? Loosen our shoulders, relax the hands, soften the stomach, notice the body. Where are you holding tension? Where can you relax? This activates our parasympathetic nervous system, which we call the rest and digest you will increase your body's well-being and your natural immunity as well just by doing this. Also, you know, how are you breathing? Breathing in and out through your belly, not through your chest. Breathing through your nose, not through your mouth. Being aware of the breath, allowing your abdomen to rise as you breathe in. As you breathe out, allowing your stomach to fall back to its natural position. This will increase oxygen to your cells and relieve tension. Number two, connection to others. How are we connecting with others? Yeah, so do we have good boundaries with those that we need to have good boundaries with, those that might zap our um, positivity, those that drain us? Are we saying no enough? Do you make time for those who fill your minds and souls with good energy, positive energy? Being present with those who you fully connect with can be such a rewarding and fortifying experience. Number three, a kinder attitude, both to ourselves and others. This is mindfulness. So when I say others, an example of this might be when others are happy, we're happy. So we're feeding off their happiness. That's an example of a kinder attitude to others. For ourselves, it's perhaps not getting too swept up with a negative internal voice. And those negative internal thoughts can be very subtle so watch out for those little ones that can easily slip through the net so choosing not to feed into that story or that narrative as I believe you know we've all got amazing potential and there's lots of things that you can do really well so focus on that to be the best version of yourself Number four, anchoring positivity. So whenever something good happens, 
register it. I think sometimes we can lose touch with how wonderful those little perfect moments can be, especially in the scramble of um, parenting. So celebrate and mark that positivity and that success. And that will absolutely retrain your thinking. Also, as a side tip, if you want a quick positive boost, bring a time from the past to the forefront of your mind and make sure this time is when you were happy and fear-free and just immerse yourself in that image for a few moments. And you will find, hopefully, that those negative thoughts will just naturally fade. Immerse yourself in that experience, feel it, bring all your senses into it, what you can see, hear, smell, taste, and then come back to your day with a more peaceful attitude. Number five, acceptance. So, Accept the things we can't control because there's lots of them and change the things we can control when they are not serving us. So sometimes we can control things like how much we buy into thoughts, like am I making the right choices? I know it doesn't always feel that way and I get that. And some days I've literally invited my negative thoughts in with a big uh, welcome hug and a cup of tea. Come in, take a seat. It's all good. But we do have a choice. We have the power to decide how much we let negativity affect us. We can write our own script every morning. So top tip, when you wake up in the morning, really simple, Take just a few moments to connect with yourself and be grateful for the new day ahead. You've woken up, it's a new day, and that would be a really awesome start to positive thinking. Things we can't control, the weather, being ill, traffic, even what other people think of us, especially what happened in the past, we can't control it, it's done. So, Those are things we can't change and perhaps try not to entertain too much of that in the headspace. So the breath and the body, the acceptance of the moment, positive self-talk, kindness, connecting with others and celebrating success will hopefully see a more fulfilling January and many more happy months to come. We've got some lovely resources in our Twinkle site. We've got some positive affirmations for parents in the parents' wellbeing section. My favourites, I'm just going to choose a few to read out and feel free to repeat them after me. I embrace my strengths and weaknesses. I try to see the best in others. I focus on the here and now. I choose to let go of guilt. I take time to rest and restore. I have endless potential in life. I have endless potential in life. I'll leave you there. I hope you enjoyed our first chat of season two. If you want to get in touch, and please do, because I really like to hear from people. You can follow us or get in touch on our Twinkle Parents social media or YouTube channel. If you want to hear more, please don't forget to like this video. If you've got any thoughts, be sure to leave a comment. I do get back to you. If you'd like to leave us a positive review, we would appreciate that enormously. So we've got some lovely guests lined up for you. So stay tuned for some more Frank open-minded and guilt-free chats. Bye for now.